Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Hello, infidels. This is Michael Savage, live in my hometown of New York City, and I don't recommend visiting in August. Welcome to The Savage Nation, Tuesday, August 18th, 2015 edition. As we wing our way into the horrendous news of the world, I want to welcome all you to the live show here at WABC. It's getting ugly. Everywhere I turn, every station I turn on, it's an attack on, guess who? Donald Trump. Of course, now they're attacking everyone in the Republican Party one at a time uh, for reasons that are quite obvious, because he will be the next president of the United States of America. So far as we know, he does not have any servers in his toilet. This is the Savage Nation. The phone number is 855-407-282. Uh, you know, I was going to talk about the explosion in Bangkok by ISIS that you didn't read about. <clears throat> Wherever I turn. Last night on the way into the uh, hotel here, come into the hotel, bingo, biggest explosion in Bangkok's history. 40 people dead, 150 wounded, and the reporters say, we don't know who did it. We have no idea who did it. We don't know why anyone would do it. We don't know how they did it. We don't know why they did it. We don't know where they did it. We don't know where to turn. We don't know who would do a thing like this, why they would do a thing like this, on and on and on. Not one mention of the obvious, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, nothing. Nothing, not one word. And you know, I've got to tell you the truth. When you come to a city like New York, you've got to understand, I work in isolation in California. You know that. It's me and a 10-pound dog. I stare at the bay or I stare at the wall. I read the news. I read the headlines. And I think that's the world. That, my friends, is part of the world. You come to a big city and you walk around, whether it's in the summer as it is now or the winter, and you see millions upon millions of people scarfing pizza, eating a hot dog, devouring a newspaper, sweating, whatever they're doing. That's real life 101. They don't know about a bomb in Bangkok. They don't care about a bomb in Bangkok. They don't even know who Obama is. They have no idea who Donald Trump is. They may have heard of him. They think he, he's somebody in a hotel business. They don't know why he's running. They think Obama was president. He might have been in the Abraham Lincoln's time. Take a look at what's going on. Look in the streets. They don't understand anything about politics. That's the real world. I'm telling you. I know what I'm saying. It's the girl in the sweaty dress. It's the guy in the hot shoes. It's the souvlaki guy towing the stand at midnight. It's the guy running the garbage truck at 2 o'clock in the morning picking up the trash that stinks. That's the real world. It's astounding. I went out to Times Square last night at midnight. I couldn't sleep in a hotel. OK, and I go walk down to Times Square. A million people are there looking at the electronic signs. And I said, that's real life. They're from all over the world. And here, here's a really nutty thing. You see women in burkas. It's 100 degrees at midnight and they're wearing burkas. How do they take that? It's a costume whose time has come in Muhammad's time. But I don't know why they would wear it in Manhattan in Times Square. Is there no summer outfit for Muslim women? And I don't mean in any disgraceful way. Is there not a summer outfit? Even the nuns wore something light for the summer when I was a kid. I don't see it. Anyway, the news is pretty horrible. Trump says illegal immigrants have got to go. It's like, hey, hey, ho, ho, all the illegals have got to go. He more or less <laughs> has said that. Well, that has got the uh, establishment in an uproar. Trump says illegal immigrants have got to go. Is he reading my books or what? Is, is Donald Trump reading this book? Has he read Stop the Coming Civil War? I don't think so. Does he listen to talk radio? I think so. Do his advisors read the Drudge Report and listen to talk radio? I know so. And so he knows what you feel. He knows what you want. He knows that you who listen to talk radio are actually the ones who drive politics in the country. You may not know it. But the people I mentioned don't drive politics. They're the extras on life stage. Most of the masses are extras on life's stage. They don't know where they are. They wander around. They walk into curtains. That's it. And then there's a small number of players. And I believe that we, we in talk radio, we are the players, the Internet of the players, and, of course, the listeners and the readers are the players of politics in America. And that's the opening to the Savage Nation. The phone number is 855-407-282. I am in a new studio. I do not have the comfort of my home studio. 
with my dog sleeping beside me. I have all new systems. I have to wear headphones, which I detest. I'm one of the only hosts in the history of radio who never uses headphones. Did you know that? I have a special Gentner suppressor system where the caller comes to me through a speaker. That is why at my age I have perfect hearing. I never wear headphones. I grew up after the headphones scene. Anyway, so if you want to get on the line, you better do it now. 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Let's go to the Drudge Report and see the headlines, because the truth is we all go to the Drudge Report. For Hillary servers kept in bathroom closet. You know, I was just in the restroom. I didn't find them. I, I looked. After I was through and washed my hands and washed my face, I looked in the, in the trash can. There were no servers there. I wonder where she put them. Zuckerberg, how many times have I attacked that fool in that undershirt? Why does this billionaire kid of Facebook want illegal immigrants in America? Do you think that he and his wife sit down to dinner with illegal immigrants? Do you think that Facebook invites illegals into their boardroom? you got to be out of your mind. He wants cheap labor. He doesn't care what it does to the country. So Trump says he wants a crackdown on illegals. He wants a crackdown on illegals. The Mexican government is in, a, in an alarm state. Why? Because they don't want them. That's why they're sending them to us. They're all the people in their country they can't take care of. They don't want them. You take them, you idiots. This is the number one issue of our time. And I've been on this since 1994 when I began a radio. We're all on it, but I was on it in 94. All my books are about it. Borders, language, culture. Where do you think my motto comes from? Borders, language, culture. What do you, I th what do you think I mean by that? And that is why Trump is pulling ahead of all competition. He is the only one hammering on the issue of illegal immigration. Now, having said that, let me back up for a minute. They're human beings. They're human beings. Let's not demonize everyone who comes across the border. A lot of them are criminals. We know that. But if you walk around a city like New York, especially at a time like this, and you see the phenomenal, I hate to use the word, I don't want to use the word diversity, the phenomenal mix of human beings, all races, every language you could imagine being spoken in the streets, that's, that's human beings. That's immigration. Now, most of these people here are tourists. That's obvious. But the fact is, the countries they come from are far tougher on immigration than we are. They've closed the doors to illegal immigrants into Mexico. It's a locked Berlin wall between Guatemala and Mexico. They don't welcome Guatemalans. They don't let them over the border. And if you look at any nation on Earth, the fact of the matter is, if you don't have a border, you don't have a nation. It's like a cell wall in a plant. Remember when you are in high school, you studied the thick cell wall that uh, kept the good stuff in and the bad stuff out, right? Well, we don't have a cell wall. We have no nation. And that's why Obama wants us to have no cell wall. He wants this nation to dissolve and become part of the protoplasm of the world, the new world order. All right. Well, that's my opening. There's a lot more to be said. I opened the newspapers this morning, and I couldn't believe there was no news. New York Times headline. China turned to risky devaluation as export machines stalled. Don't know what it means. No one understands the headline. Next headline to cover up the I word. Religion meets rebellion. How ISIS lured three friends. It sounds like a, a television dating show. London girls heated siren call. Tailored to teenage dreams and vulnerabilities. These are three maniac Muslims who became would-be bombers, look how they write a headline. Mr. Sulzberger, are you insane? That's what I want to say to him. How did you inherit a great newspaper from your grandfather and destroy it like this? Who could write a headline like this and be considered sane? Religion meets rebellion. How ISIS lured three friends. London girls heated siren call tailored to teenage dreams and vulnerabilities. And now you know why I say liberalism is a mental disorder. All right, let's go to some of the callers. Here's someone on WABC Local. Line number seven, Joe. What's on your mind, Joe? Hello, Michael. A couple of points. Um, I have three sons who are millennials, and I was talking to them the other day. They, they like Trump because he's a winner. He wants to bring back uh, jobs to America. And... Uh, not that they're so into political science or philosophy, but they just like winners. I mean, these are the kids that that follow sports, and uh, so uh, I, I think... You mean they look at him as a successful man, and they like a successful man who's proud of his success? Is that is that a, a way to say it? Uh, yes, yeah. That, that, you know, i got to tell you something. I had a dream about Trump last night. It's shocking. He's getting into my subconscious. I dream Well, not about him like I wasn't with him. I had a dream that I was telling people, which I'm going to tell you, the reason I like Trump is that he's already made me more proud of myself. 
the reason I like Trump is that he's made me able to say, I worked hard, I achieved success, and I'm proud of it. I don't have to hide it when he's around, in my mind. He's already elevated the, the psyche of America. He's already made America greater. Do you know that? All the others, America's no good. America used to be good. America won't be good. America could have been good. America is no good. America's the bad boy to Hillary Clinton and all the Republicans. The only one who made America good is Trump. And uh, Trump speaks in simple terms. He speaks in the common man's term. I, I'm basically, I'm a college professor, but he speaks in a way that people can listen. If he says, you know, to shut up or he's stupid, that's the way most people speak. That's right. They like that he's playing. I tell you what they really like. He didn't, that, they, that, that girl, Blondie, who I call Martha Washington, whose name I forget, the one on vacation hiding, uh, I forget her name, Martha Washington. I don't know her real name, the one on Fox. When she tried to trick him up, trip him up, he cut her off, and he said, only Rosie O'Donnell. That won over the women vote. You want to know why? Even black women. Because they don't like women putting men down. How do you like that? Most women in America are dying for a man. They're dying for a man to stand up. And i got to tell you something. He seems to be the only man in the, in the campaign. It's the Savage Nation, Joe. Thanks for calling. That opens up one line to the uh, Savage Nation, WABC Studios, right here live, overlooking the hot, sweltering streets of my birth town. The phone number is 855-400-7282. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. The executive order gets uh, rescinded. One good thing you'll about you'll rescind. One good thing you'll about, rescind the dream out executive you're order. You're going to have to. DACA. We have to make a whole new set of standards. And when people come in, they have so to. You're going to split in up like families. Chuck. You're going to deport children. Chuck, oh, shut up, Todd. We're going to keep the families together. We have to keep the families together. But you're going to keep them together. Go, uh, right? go grow a go. beard on your no brain. We will work with them. They have to go. Chuck, and we either have a country or we don't have a country. See, there's this lightweight, Chuck Todd. He grew a beard, tried to look like an intellectual, and he's trying to, like, pin the tail on the donkey. That's his job, is to get real tough with Donald Trump and real tough with the nice Republicans and sits there like a lapdog when he's around Obama the dictator. Don't you love it? Chuck Todd, real tough guy, but put him in a room with Obama. He needs a pair of Depends. Trying to pin a tail on a donkey. Oh, you want to break up families. You want to break up families. So you know what we're talking about, Chuck, you idiot, you? We're talking about the stupidest nation on earth with an anchor baby law. You know what the anchor baby law says? If you come here and you're nine and a half months pregnant and you have a baby here, the baby's an automatic citizen. Say, well, that's okay, is it? Let me tell you about a country that stopped their anchor baby law, and I'll tell you how it happened because I know very well how and when. Canada used to have an, an anchor baby law. Which said, just like this dumb country, if you're pregnant in your ninth month, take a plane from China, take a, a bus from Mexico and get over the border, deliver the baby here, the baby's a citizen, and bingo, they pull the whole family in. Well, <clears throat> China was being inundated by mainland Chinese who were flying in in their ninth month, delivering babies literally at the airport, and take a guess who in Canada eliminated the anchor baby law, it was a Chinese Canadian, it was a Canadian of Chinese descent who said, we cannot survive as a nation if we permit China to keep doing this to our country. And they eliminated the anchor baby law. You learned it first, right here on the Savage Nation. And it's long overdue that we eliminate the anchor baby law. Now, why is this so difficult for anyone to understand? Now, I know many of you are immigrants, descendants, as I am. My grandfather, my father was an immigrant. By the way, not my grandfather, my father. I'm first-generation American. Does that give me a special place? Not really. But I know very well what it is to have one foot in the old world and one foot in the new world. And the fact of the matter is, I have two feet in this world at WABC. And I'm very happy that my grandfather was an immigrant. But the fact of the matter is, is that we cannot take all of the world's poor. As I said to you, Canada eliminated the anchor baby law. 
Canada did it, and it was a Chinese Canadian who did it. Because he said otherwise, China's going to dump all of their young on us. We can't afford it. So why is this so difficult for people to understand? What, because someone gets labeled a racist? You've got to get over these labels. And Trump is the only one who was standing up and saying, look, Chuck, Chuck, stop it. We need to have laws that we won't have a nation. And Chuck Todd keeps trying to run him over, run him over, run him over. And, and he does it, by the way. Without anger. I couldn't pull it off. I would have gotten mad at Chuck Dodd. I would have yelled. But Trump does it in a Reagan-esque manner. That's the truth. He has good nature. And I think that's why he's selling. He doesn't get mad. They don't have the ability to provoke him. At least that's one man's opinion. I'm open to your opinion right here on the Savage Nation. The phone number is 855-407-282. Uh, let's see what we have out there. You know, we're talking also about the big bomb attack in, uh, in Bangkok, Thailand. It's an ISIS event. Thailand's never had such an explosion in downtown Bangkok. And believe me, as I walked around Times Square last night at midnight and saw a million people sitting there at midnight looking at the signs, I said, what's going to prevent us from having some idiots set off a backpack explosion? The cops are everywhere, by the way. God bless the NYPD. Of course, today, the NYPD under Mayor de Blasio may as well stand for not your problem, dear. That's something my wife taught me, which is when I stick my nose into affairs that are really not my business, she grabs me by the arm and she says, NYPD, not your problem, dear. But it is your problem. It's your radio show. We have time for one quick call right here on the Savage Nation. Let's take the next one up. Dwight, line six. Go ahead. You're up on the Savage Nation. Hey, thanks for having me, doctor. Um, when I, what I called for was I just want to tell uh, Donald Trump, you know, to keep doing what he's doing. I support him. I'm a black man, and I like what he's doing, you know. And he, he, he's telling it like it is, because what it is is, He's not a politician, and we're tired of politicians. And so, Dwight, here you are, a black man, saying you like Donald Trump because he says it like it is. Okay, good. And I see black women standing up for Donald Trump, no matter how they try to smear him and call him a racist. And he really isn't. The guy is a successful businessman, and if that's not quintessentially an American, what is? That's what I'd like to know. Well, what I'd like to say to Mr. Trump is he, he needs to stay being him. He needs to start telling people... If the Republicans are not with him, then they're against him, and they're fired. And he's coming. Dwight, Dw are you going to vote for uh, Donald? Of course I'd vote for Donald, because I wouldn't vote for Hillary, because she'll give the vote <laughs> to somebody else to lead. God bless you, Dwight, for listening to the Savage Nation. The only show a person needs to retain their sanity, not only in New York, but in the world. Just ask my dog, Teddy. It's the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. 855-407-282. Be here, or be absolutely nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Start spreading. It is the Savage Nation live from the sweltering streets of New York City. It's a great place to visit in August. 94 degrees, 100% humidity. What more could you ask if you're a man like me who loves humanity? <laughs> the truth is, is that it's something to see. I remember the streets, and uh, of course, I lived in the tropics. It's very much like the tropics with cement. That's what New York is today. And of course, we're talking about the news, which the average person just doesn't care about. You got to look at the average person, the cab driver sweating to make a buck, the garbage man two o'clock in the morning picking up the trash. Do you think that they care about politics? They really don't. And that's why the fact of the matter is that's why politicians get away with what politicians do. Is this a new phenomenon? No. Cato the Elder, the Roman historian, wrote that the average Roman did not care what the legions were doing in a foreign nation. They didn't care about wars overseas. They didn't care about what the politicians were saying. What did the average Roman care about? <clears throat> he wrote, the average Roman cares about the pebble in the shoe. What is the pebble in the shoe? The price of wheat, the price of leather, the uh, taxation. In other words, the stuff that the average person is affected by is all that the average person cares about, which is why we in talk radio are rather weird. We care about all this stuff all the time. Well, the average person cares about it maybe a week before an election, and that's about it. So we got to hold down the fort. I know many of you who listen are as fanatical about the news as we are, but this show is more than the news. I've told you that, and I'm visiting New York, and although I've started hot with the news, I'm going to get to the family stories. I'm going to give you some reminiscences coming in the Lincoln Tunnel last night about... I'll do it right now. How about if I do it right now at 35 minutes after the hour? I'm not going to wait. Coming through the Lincoln Tunnel, stuck in traffic, I look at the tile work. I remember my father, may he rest in peace, said to me, Michael, all that tile work was built during the Depression. 
during uh, with a program called the Works Progress Administration, the WPA. You know what that is, folks? That's government jobs. But unlike today, these were government jobs where the men had to, the men and women had to do something. They had to produce. They worked, in other words, and got a check from the government, and that brought us out of the depression. Now that's anathema to the Republicans who say, "Leave it to the free market." Well, sometimes the free market doesn't work, and there is a difference between creating a thing such as hire the tile makers to put tile in a tunnel, a new tunnel, hire the steel workers to build a steel bridge. They built the George Washington Bridge. They built the Golden Gate Bridge. The uh, God knows half the things we see in this country that are still great were built during the Great Depression by government contracts. People don't know that, but they put people back to work. Now, that is different than a welfare state that gives people money to do nothing. So I think you have to, like, refine your idea of hey, we're into the free market. Well, guess what? The free market does not build tunnels. The free market does not build bridges. There are things that only government can do. The thing is that we've got to get workers to learn how to do them. And so that's one of my observations, just driving through that grimy tunnel. This is the Savage Nation. Uh, the phone number is 855-407-282. I want to go back to Trump for a minute. Trump is in my mind. In the middle of the night, I wake up with a dream that I'm on the radio. I'm telling you, Trump has already affected people for the better. Why? He's made success okay again. Do you remember 30 years ago, there was a, a statement, if you got it, flaunt it. Remember that? Everyone who had money would show it. Rolls Royces, Ferraris, Lamborghinis. People were not hiding their wealth. And then all of a sudden, in the last number of years, it become kind of, you had to hide your wealth. You had to make believe you're poor. What Trump is saying is, I built it. I didn't steal it. I'm not a criminal. I'm proud of it. And I can make Americans proud of America again. So as I said to you, I, an immigrant son, that's how I started the show, I built this from nothing. I started with nothing. I had no contacts. I didn't know anyone in publishing. I've written 30 books. I didn't know anyone in radio. I'm on 250 stations thanks to Cumulus Media. The fact of the matter is, though, how did I do it? I did it through Drive. I did it through some talent. And I did it through a lot of luck and a lot of prayer. But the fact is, is I'm proud of it. Why should I have to hide my success? Trump has made it okay to be successful again. And that, my friends is unto itself a benefit to all Americans. And that's what's going to make America great again. It's not him. He is not going to make America great again. He'll make Americans make America great again. That's my opinion. I'll take yours right now on the uh, Savage Nation. Now, there's someone who doesn't like Trump. There's someone who does like Trump. There's someone who knows what's going on in, uh, in Thailand. Let's go to KSFO, my hometown of San Francisco. Line number eight, go ahead, please. Uh, you're on the Savage Nation. Thank you for taking my call, Michael. Um, I love Trump. Uh, this guy is resonating with the American people, and even the Republican Party is still denying that immigration is not the, the key issue that we are all, you know, is number one on our list, and I can't believe that. Immigration is the issue of our times, and I'm sorry, it is the issue of our times, because we all understand the country's changing too rapidly, number one, and not necessarily for the better. I am an immigrant son. i got to say that again. What is wrong with immigration? Well, nothing if you need immigrants. Uh, if you don't have enough workers, you need immigrants. And if you uh, you have businessmen who can come in with $100,000 to start a business, bring them in. But you cannot feed all of the world's poor for the rest of eternity. One person called this show when I did this last summer as I was visiting the, the city, and he said, well, what about the Statue of Liberty with Emma Lazarus' statement, give us your tired, your poor, and your hungry? Whatever happened to that, he said. I said, well, there was no welfare state then. There's a big difference between give us your tired, your poor, and your hungry, who'll come here to work, not give us your tired, your poor, and your hungry, who'll come here to sleep. And so that's the difference between Emma Lazarus' Statue of Liberty uh, inscription and today. It's not the same world. At least that's one man's opinion. This is the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please continue. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I'm a talk show host. That's what we do for a living. Well, I, I like to listen to you more than I like to listen to myself, Michael. So. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a talk show. The guy says, I like to listen to you rather than listen to myself. All right, thank you. I'm sure Teddy would agree with you. He'd rather hear his master's voice than a caller, but I want some callers because I know many of you want to be on this memorable show. I'm only here for a couple of days. Then I'm going back to my isolation tank in San Francisco. I work in home studios, by the way. It's no secret. People know that. It's one man and a dog. 
with a radio kitchen and a radio this right nearby. And you know what? I still see the world for what it is. And that's an amazing thing to come here and I can still see the pizza on the ground. I can smell the hot dogs, smell the garbage at midnight. It never leaves your olfactory senses. But I may actually um, travel a lot more. I may visit some of the other great stations I'm on. WMAL invited me in Washington. That's the whole list. What WMAL in Washington <laughs> invited me a uh, 250 station. That's another station I'm going to visit one of these days because the program director is a great guy. And he loves Michael Savage. What's going to happen now is every PD is going to say, me too. I want you to come out. I don't actually travel a lot. It's the Savage Nation. There's no Anglo anchor baby law. What's this? What's this? Ar Argy on line two. Go ahead, please. What are you saying about the anchor baby law? You, you kept on referring to the anchor baby law. There is no anchor baby law. The thing what is it? liberals are hanging their hats on is the 14th Amendment. Do you know why the 14th Amendment was passed? And I do know why, but you tell you I, don't ex I know exactly why. Okay, so then there is no anchor baby law. That, that amendment was passed right after the Civil War to, legitim to legitimize the citizenship of the freed neg Negro slaves. That is correct. That was it was it. the 14th Amendment was to legitimize the freed slave. That is correct. And it was never meant to permit folks from another country to come here and have babies, which be makes them citizens. Isn't that what you're saying? We turned the other cheek and we let it come to pass. But the time is up. This thing has to go to the courts and it has to be redefined. Like Trump said, he's going to he's either eliminate it or redefine the 14th. Everybody's going crazy about that. Trump is the only person that I believe can save this country. All right, I hear you, but let me read something. Those who want the anchor baby law to stay, go and write columns like babies aren't the issue. And they write stu stuff such as uh, Rob Randhava, Leadership Conference on Civil Rights. Here's what he writes. he writes. Proposals to do this are based on the concern that immigrants give birth to children on U.S. soil for the purpose of using their citizenship to stay here. Even if there was evidence that this is common and there isn't, that's a lie. Of course there's evidence that there is. It would be largely beside the point. He said, it's indisputable that most people come here illegally because they desperately want work. Employers are thrilled to provide it, and government usually turns a blind eye. Pardon me, sir. How do you explain Kate Steinle's murder? Did he come here to work? How do you explain the rape and murder that occurred by an illegal immigrant last year? You say, all right, that's an anomaly. Don't make that the issue. All right. Then how do you account for the fact that 30% of all prisoners are illegal aliens who didn't come here desperately looking for work? They came here desperately looking to do crime. So, my friends, that's a separate issue. And the fact of the matter is the children of illegal aliens are human beings. Yes, we know that. But if you have a mom who's dirt poor, living in a third world nation, and she can get a one-way ticket to America, and she's nine months pregnant, and she delivers that baby here in a hospital in Texas, California, New York, uh, Illinois. Baby's a citizen. That means mommy's a citizen because you don't want to break up families, do you? Now, mommy probably has a father and a mother somewhere. You don't want to break that family up, do you? And then they have relatives. You want to break that family up, do you? Do you understand how this works? Do you? This is the Savage Nation. 855 400 Line one, Tony on WBAP. Go ahead, please. The idea of Trump endorsing an ultimate nominee of the Republican Party is like passing a bill without reading it. A stupid, bad deal in a form of corrupt power broking. Wait, are you, you lost me. Wait, Tony, Tony, start from the top. Please say it like from the top, what you were saying. The idea of Trump endorsing the ultimate nominee of the Republican Party is like passing a bill he didn't read. A stupid, bad deal. Interesting. Very well done. Very well put. Very well put. Yeah, why should he endorse, for example, someone who's opposed to all the common sense ideas that he has? Why would he say he would? Well, they haven't found another candidate with common sense ideas yet. Well, I would say that, no, I would say some of them have common sense ideas, but they don't have the theatrical horsepower to win. Some of them are good men and smart men, but I don't think they could win. I'll give you an example. I just learned about 30 minutes ago that Donald Trump is the first candidate who is going to be on the cover of The Hollywood Reporter. That means he is a hybrid between politics, business, and entertainment. He has crossed over. Even Hollywood is enraptured in, in, in with him. Why? He has what used to be called charisma, 
And when you have charisma, you can attract crowds. You can move crowds. That's what scares the heck out of the uh, people in the, in the field on both sides of the aisle. And, and the media, the media hate him because he's bigger than them. Nobody in the media has been able to do what he's done. He's jumped from the media to politics, and America loves him. You take a guy like Chuck Todd. Where does this Lilliputian get off to try and pin a tail on his donkey? Why does he do it? To make a name for himself. I got Donald Trump. They're all lightweights. He's right about that, and I'm glad he's standing up to them. We all are. Now let's go to another topic. Line 9, WABC. Talk about the bomb that went off in Bangkok last night. Go ahead, please. Michael, you're the only one talking about that massive explosion in Bangkok, and you connected the dots right away to an attack by radical Islam. One of the questions you brought up after that was, what's to not say it's going to happen over here? I believe it's going to happen over here, Michael, but I believe all of us are just holding our breath and waiting. Here's the thing about America. If a bomb went off, God forbid, in America, and it didn't hit the guy a block down, they wouldn't care that it happened anymore. Don't you understand everyone's into themselves? It's, the, it's like I am Caitlin. It's like, how does my makeup look? Did that bomb which killed 200 people affect my mascara? And did it break my high heel? That's about America's mentality today. Did I snap a heel when the bomb went off? Not really, you know, something. Oh, I heard it went off, but you know, I was lucky. I was, a, I was out of the blast zone. I got a camera, got right out of there. And by the way, uh, what happened? I don't really care. It didn't hurt me. That's the attitude. It's that simple. You know that. Oh, Michael, I know that, and usually the phones are... <laughs> what, what, do you like my pantomimes when I break into that voice? <laughs> Dr. Savage, have a good day. All right. No, I could do the voices. I think I should do some voices today. I do a very good voice of the average, you know, like lipstick-wearing uh, whatever. <laughs> Stop laughing in the studio. We have a guest guests in the studio who are laughing. They think it's funny. It's not funny. I mean, the bomb went off in Thailand, and, and no one even knows it happened. I searched the news. I couldn't find it. But we put together a montage to show you your brilliant media at work. Uh, guys, do we have that somewhere, the, the actual response? Let's do it after the break. What break? Well, we have a break now? Break? Are we taking a break right now, or are we going to take a break? Now after have to take a break? I don't want to take a break. No, I, I want to run it late. I want to really run it, run a risk here that I go run out of time. All right, I will. This is Michael Savage live from the sweltering streets of Manhattan on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. There's not much that we can do to stop the violence against us. Well, if, if that is... That's a conversation that I've pushed okay, back. Okay, I understand. And I understand what you're also saying. also respectfully. Yeah, respectfully. well, respectfully, if that is your position, then I will talk only to white people about how we are going to deal that's with the very I mean. real that's problems. That's not what I mean. So that's Hillary Clinton to the Black Lives Matter uh, th folks saying, I will only talk to white people about dealing with racism. Does it get any lower than that? Does it get any lower than Hillary Clinton pandering to a group of radicals in Black Lives Matter? Does it get any lower? Does it have to be spelled out for you to understand that she'll be a bigger divider than Barack Obama? Now that circles us right back to Donald Trump. Is he a divider or a uniter? I don't know. There's a lot of folks who are not white who like him. There's a whole huge community of people of other races who look up to him because they want to make it in America. That's the dirty little secret. They want a rich man to teach them how to be rich. They want a rich man to show them the way. They want a rich man to say, it's okay to work hard and make it. Maybe you won't be me, but you'll get somewhere along the way. They don't want to hear from a woman who's going to say, you got too much if you make $45,000 a year, now you're rich. No, so the fact is, is that we don't want socialism in the country, but that opens up a whole line of callers right now, and I want to open some lines, folks. I want to hear in the next hour from those of you who oppose Donald Trump and why. Glenn Beck can call. I know he's on vacation in Newfoundland right now looking for a new life, but the fact is, is that Glenn Beck wrote a long column about why do intelligent conservatives, including myself, Michael Savage, back Donald Trump. Well, I think you've heard why I back Donald Trump. 
because he permits a schmendrick like Glenn Beck to get rich and be proud of himself. And uh, that unto itself is a reason that Glenn Beck should like Donald Trump. What should he like, Bernie Sanders, who would tell him he's too rich and he wants to tax him at 98% of his income? Hey, Glenn, why don't you back Bernie Sanders? And why don't you show by example? Give a tithing to the federal government, Glenn. Give 98% of your income to taxes, Glenn. If you oppose Donald Trump, call the Savage Nation and tell us why. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. It is The Savage Nation, and I am hopped up on radio. I am bullish on talk radio. I'm having such a good time, it should be a crime, but... So far, it isn't a crime. Am I allowed to be this high and this happy on, on diet soda and a Greek salad? <laughs> I just had a New York tuna fish sandwich, a New York Greek salad from a greasy takeout joint, which my assistant Ryan got somewhere near Madison Square Garden. And it tastes better than the most expensive meal in the most expensive restaurant in San Francisco. <laughs> I guess you can say you can take the boy out of the grime, but you can't take the grime out of the boy. ha, 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 ha. Yeah, so we're talking about the election. We're talking about, oh, did you hear about that one? Big bomb in Bangkok didn't make it to your local paper, did it? Why? Well, it may have been them again. <laughs> it may have been the practitioners of that um, way of life that Obama says doesn't exist. See, they bombed Bangkok around a Buddhist shrine while the people were at the Buddhist shrine, they killed about 40, 50. Who can remember? And they're only Thai people anyway. And they wounded, I don't know, several hundred. <clears throat> but it didn't make it to your paper. Instead, it's all about bashing Trump day and night. That's all they can do all day long. The Chuck Todds of the world, that's all they can do. And the reason that they hate Donald Trump is manifest and manifold. There's many reasons they hate him. He's successful. You know, they used to say that people uh, are jealous of a man's money, his wife, and his shoes. And those are the three reasons that Donald Trump is resented by Chuck Todd and the other Lilliputians. He has more money, a nicer wife, and shinier shoes than Chuck Todd does. But we're here to talk about all the news of the day. The phone number is 855 We're also talking about the anchor baby law, which Donald Trump says he would eliminate. And the liberals are going berserk over that one. And then I've asked you, if you oppose Donald Trump, to call the show. I'd like to know why. I'd like to know why you don't like Donald Trump. Now, before I take your calls, let me put it to you this way. Nobody running for office is going to give you 100% of what you want. I don't care who it is. Maybe you'll get 80 on the dollar, 75. But when you consider the other Republicans where you're getting 0 to 30... I'd say a 50 to 80 is higher than a 0 to 30, right? So let, that's number one. But the main reason I like Trump is he is saying the right things. You know, can he enact them? Sure, by executive order. People are going to say, well, you can't get rid of the anchor baby law because Congress would never pass it like this moron Rubio saying, oh, it'll never pass Congress. Did Rubio ever hear of executive orders, the thing that Obama's been using for several years now? So Rubio is a lightweight. Rubio is a boy in a man's world, and it's embarrassment. It's embarrassing for me to watch him. He doesn't belong in this race. He was never qualified at any speed. Uh, but, of course, CNN and the others are touting Rubio because he's anti-Trump, so they love him. The reason I like Trump, and let me get back to it, is because he makes he's making success okay again. I got to repeat it. I got to keep repeating it till you finally hear me. I'm the only one who's actually talking about Trump from a an emotional point of view. Everyone's talking about policies, which is good, but let's talk about what his rhetoric is already doing. It's making it okay to be successful. And you see, America is a state of mind. I've known this since I'm 18 years old. America is a state of mind. If people believe that things are going to be better, that unto itself changes things for the better. 
And we've had politicians like Obama who's run us down. He's made America a bad place. He's made America evil. He's made America wrong. He's apologized for things that Americans didn't even do. And that's made people ashamed to be Americans. And it destroys the morale of a nation. Do you understand what I'm talking about, morale? You ask anybody, whether it's a sports team or the military, it's all based on the morale of that team. And, and uh, Obama is the worst thing I've ever seen for America's morale. He's destroyed it. Obama has destroyed America's confidence. Trump is going to give America conf Americans confidence again. He's going to bring confidence back to America. That alone will make us a better country. Now, the, the minutiae of the, uh, the, the positions and the policies, do we really know what he's going to do? Do we really know if he can do it? I don't know. I really don't know. I know most politicians promise the world and deliver some of it. That I know. I'm a realist. But if a guy can make you feel good about a country and make the country feel good about itself, and he can tell foreigners who don't like us to go you know where, that unto itself is worth a lot to me. And I think it's worth a lot to you. But many of you are not sold, and I'm not here to sell you on them. It's that simple. I'm here to talk about the issues of the day on the Savage Nation, 855-407-282. On the other side of the aisle is an overt, low-life, street socialist, communist, a terrible loser professional agitator like Bernie Sanders, a guy who doesn't even believe he's getting this kind of attention. A left-wing fanatic that if you ever saw him, you'd say, who is that man? Call the police. He looks like a vagrant. Now, all of a sudden, he was like the college professor that you had who for three hours harangued you about America and then made you feel guilty about white privilege. That's Bernie Sanders. It's unbelievable to me. A communist from his dirty toenails to his, to his dandruff. His dandruff flakes are socialistic. That's how bad this guy is. Now, listen. If you have a choice between a socialist communist like Bernie Sanders and a capitalist like Donald Trump, and that's the general election, it's an 85-15, maybe a 90-10, period. So let's listen to uh, 06. Here is Socialism 101 in Clip 6 from Bernie Sanders. If we are going to transform America, Here we go if again. we are going to have a government that represents working families uh, and not working large family. campaign donors, Lord, we need Lord. a political revolution in this country. You've been trying to have a revolution since you, since you were born in Brooklyn, a revolution. Another one, a soapbox revolutionary, Bernie Sanders. Again, if we're going to transform America. Hey, Bernie, we should transform America by making sure that low lowlifes like you can never get where you want to go. Now listen to Seven. As he makes believe he's going to attack the rich, Bernie Sanders, commie in Seven. We need millions of people to stand up and make it clear oh. to the billionaire class they oh, cannot please. have it all. Oh, come on. They are going to start paying their fair share of taxes. Oh, yeah, okay. Now, listen to his voice. He sounds like oh, uh, Woody Allen on Laughing Gas. If Woody Allen came out of a dental office and he was jacked up on laughing gas, he'd sound like Bernie Sanders. We need millions of people to stand up and make it clear to the billionaire class. They cannot have it all. They're going to start paying their fair share of taxes. Now, does that inspire you? Is that a man who you would follow into a, a hail of machine gun bullets? I don't think so. This guy is an embarrassment. So, all right, give me a break here. I mean, is that what you want to represent America against China and Putin? That's who you see standing up to Putin? Now, by the way, let's talk about foreign policy. I think Trump can out-negotiate Putin. I think Trump can out-negotiate the Chinese. I think Trump knows how to do business. And America, at the end of the day, is an enterprise very much like a business, and we need someone who knows how to run a business in plain English. But many of you still don't like him? Okay, now let's see why. Glenn on line six from WABC, you oppose Donald Trump. Tell us why. Uh, because of the whole anchor baby thing. I don't agree that if you're born in the United States, you're not a citizen. If you're born in the United States, you're a citizen, period. Well, what about people who come from China, let's say, who are nine months pregnant and deliver a baby two days after getting here? Do you think that's fair? Uh, no, I do not. I think that should be an exception. If you're... Well, wait, hold on. Oh, whoa, whoa. But that's what an anchor baby is. Yeah, they have the baby... Wait a minute. They have the baby here, so the mother becomes a citizen who brings in the father. Don't you understand how it works? Yeah, no. If you come across the border illegally and then you have a baby, the baby's born here, goes to school here... 
you're not going to tell me now you're going to support a kid and the parents and the whole family the way he said he would. So what would you do? Would you let them keep coming over the border and having the baby here in the ninth month? Yeah, but I wouldn't cut, I wouldn't make up not in the ninth month. That's wait, wait, wait. You said yes? You would say that's okay to keep pouring over the border nine months pregnant? No, no, no. Not nine months pregnant. Now, if you came here... To right, how much? Eight months pregnant? You can come over eight months pregnant? <laughs> hey, that's something for the politicians to debate. I don't, I don't can, they come over, can they come over 7.2 months pregnant and deliver two months later and have a baby? Don't you see the problem here? A lot of people, look, are taking advantage of this nice country. And if you were very poor... And you were dirt poor living in Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, you know, or Honduras, or China for that matter. And uh, you were a woman and you were eight months pregnant. Wouldn't you wait that month, buy a ticket, come here, have the baby so you could become a citizen and get all the benefits of this nice nation? Yeah, I, I don't think that should be legal. I, I think if you come here... You don't think that should be legal? So that's all we're talking about. We're not talking about coming down and being evil to people who are here and had babies. Thank you. At least we're talking about it. All right, here's a guy who likes Bernie Sanders. Line four, Bill, WABC. What do you like about Bernie? Bernie is a formidable candidate, Dr. Savage. And Trump owes tremendous success to your book and the borders, language, culture, philosophy. But Sanders can't be stopped because of the socialist momentum and the election freeing. Now, election freaking is a... Wait, wait, you said Bernie can't be stopped? Do you know that the average person in the street does not know who he is? But look at the crowds. Here's why he can't be... Stopped. Where, why do you think he's attracting... Who are the crowds he's attracting? College people, the professor crowds, the tenured professors, the, the malcontents, uh, ex-prisoners who were in for, like, child molestation, uh, people who uh, were arrested for counterfeiting. Who else would it, go, would it be attracted to Bernie Sanders? An ex-counterfeiter, a molester. Who, who would go for this but a college student or a college teacher on, on tenure? Or a molester or a counterfeiter. Who would like this guy? I like Trump. But All right, get off the show. Come on. This guy changes his name as often as uh, Bernie Sanders changes his positions. Every day is another name. He's Bernie from New York. He's Bill from New York. He's Harold from New York. He's Sam from Connecticut. He's Bob from uh, Pens D Duluth, Pennsylvania. Every day, but I recognize, and he changes the voice, too, this one. But I have a keen ear. I heard the voice. I knew who it was. The screener can't pick it up. He does it just to pull my leg. But let's get someone who really doesn't like uh, Trump for the reasons uh, that we uh, want to hear. Mary on WJR Radio, why do you oppose Donald Trump? Well, uh, he won't fund Planned Parenthood. I heard him on the TV the other night, and even this was even after the six videos, and he tried to claim that, well, they hardly do any abortions, and most of what they do is women's health, and he turns to Ivana on these issues, and he's, he's smart enough to know what's going on. I, I didn't buy that. And, you know, he's, he's a good actor, and he, I just, how can he turn around uh, 11 million people and then choose who's going to come back? And um, he, did, he did a lot of 180s. In the beginning, I was like really sold on him because he he is he's got a good message and yet it's like so many question marks and then I keep going where's Occupy Wall Street they attacked Romney this guy's probably richer than Romney why aren't they after him we know those were manufactured protests maybe you know because I haven't heard any well I would guess that they're working for Obama somewhere in the Department of Health and Human Services probably in the abortion business yeah <laughs> Well, I don't know, though. George Soros, he funds a lot of stuff, and, you know... All right, so you don't like Donald Trump, so who would you support? Well, I could never decide between Cruz and Scott Walker. Oh, Do you think that they could win? Do you really think they have the charisma? Listen to the word I used, Mary, the personality to win. Do you think Ted Cruz has the personality to win? I don't, I don't think anyone has the charisma that Trump does, to tell you the truth. All right, so here's, here's our dilemma. Let's say he's a flip-flopper on certain issues, which you've pointed out quite aptly, by the way. The Planned Parenthood, he should say, no, I will defund them. He can come out and say, you know what, I really didn't see the videos. Now that I have, I will defund them. In fact, if I see Mr. Trump, I'll tell him, look, Donald, you've got to look at those videos. People are incensed over this. This is not just about abortion. This is about selling baby body parts. This is infanticide. These people are criminals. They should go to prison. Maybe he's never seen them. I don't really know. I'm not here to justify or, or oppose him or support him. I like him personally because he's got the horsepower to beat Hillary. Who else can beat her? 
I, Actually, the I, only one who could beat Hillary is Hillary herself. That That's the only hope we have. And the only one to help Hillary beat herself is her number one competitor, and that's Bill Clinton, who has long resented her. Alpha males and alpha females often don't get along, and we well know that they've been in competition long enough to know that he's undermined her before. Mary, I hear you very well, but let's be careful before we destroy Trump to understand that we have no one else to back right now. 855, I have a caller coming up on this family separation that is so good that I can't wait to get back from this commercial break to let you hear yourself on this anchor baby business and how it's actually something you need to learn more about right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. The executive order gets uh, rescinded. One good thing you'll about rescind, one good thing you'll about, rescind the dream out executive you're gonna order. You're going to have to. We have to make a whole new set of standards. And when people come in, they have so to come in. You're going to split up families. Chuck, you're going to deport children. Chuck, no, no. We're going to keep the families together. We have to keep Jesus. the families together. But you're going to keep but them together. To but they have to go. What if they have no place to go? We will work with them. They have to go. Chuck, and we either have a country or we don't have a country. All right, so there's the Lilliputian, Chuck Todd, who grew a beard to look intelligent, trying to take on a giant, Donald Trump. But Donald Trump said on this issue, which I agree with, that the anchor baby law has to go. I don't see how anyone could argue with that if they're rational. He didn't say throw them out of the country. He said something has to be done. He's the only one at least raising the issue. And I've asked you to call on that issue on the Savage Nation. And I have a caller I meant to get to, which we've, we've got to get to right now. Randy on WALG Radio. Go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Yeah, thank you. Um, they separate children from their parents every single day. They, corporal punishment in America. Wait, wait. Listen, so no, you're saying that family protective services run by usually by very mean people Take children away from parents in America daily. Is that what you're saying? Breaking up families? Every day. Every day. They put Good. Let me say bravo to that. If I had copies of Government Zero to give out, I'd give you one. Man, that is so brilliant. There's an average American who's smarter than the, most people in the media. Oh, Donald Trump, do you want to break up families? Here's the answer. Family Protective Services breaks up families every day if someone gets, uh, let's say, in traffic court too many times they take the child away or the wife makes an accusation against them that could be false join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 savage Can Michael Savage save America? I've tried for 21 years. I don't think I've done it yet. But along comes a man on a white horse named Donald Trump. Remember people saying, who's the man on the white horse? I think he's the man on the white horse, which is why Mexico is freaking out, which is why the Republicans are freaking out, which is why the Democrats are being the demagogues that they are. And we know that Trump is not perfect. We also know he's, at this point, not clear on many of his proposals. He's still thinking his way through the campaign. And moreover, we don't know what he can actually get done. But we all know that immigration is changing America forever and not necessarily for the better. And I am speaking again as an immigrant son. I'm Michael Savage. I don't think there's anyone else in the major media that I know of. And you tell me if there is. Can you name anyone else in the top five in talk radio who is an actual immigrant son? No. Can you name anyone in the major leagues of the media who is an immigrant son? No. So I understand the immigrant experience quite well. In fact, I had a grandmother living in my house uh, when I was a child who didn't speak English. Did you know that? She spoke in Russian. And the fact of the matter is, I know what it's like to live with a grandmother who does not speak the language of the land. Now, my father said to me, only speak English because otherwise you'll become nothing in America. And that is a fact of reality. And yet we have millions of people who come here and don't even want to bother learning to speak English. What do you think they're going to be like five or ten years from now? Now, having said that, again, i got to go back to the city I'm in right now. And normally I do my show out of San Francisco or the Enverones of San Francisco from various locations or from Los Angeles uh, or points on the West Coast. Rarely do I come east. And when I do, I, I'm in Florida. And 
I've only been in New York City doing the show live once this year, actually a year ago, last August, uh, when I was uh, in the city. And here I am in a hot summer day of days of August, again, doing the show. You can literally and palpably feel the heat coming off the pavement. It's not pleasant, but to me, it's beautiful. Even ugliness can be beautiful. Let me tell you that. There's a certain beauty in ugliness. And I don't want to go into that, but I got to tell you something. Not everything that's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful resonates as beautiful. Sometimes things that are ugly, ugly, ugly resonate as beautiful. And so sweltering heat, garbage in the streets, the teeming masses. Guess what? It's beautiful to me, and I'm glad to be alive. So I come here, and I look around. I see a city with every race, every language you can imagine in the streets. And I want to tell you who the big loser is going to be from an America that is changing so rapidly because of Obama's desire to change it so rapidly. And I have to say it in all candidness. America's black population, especially the poor, are the ones who are going to lose out the most. I look around and I see people on the bottom end of society who are working. Tell me who was going to take their jobs, but immigrants who were will, willing to work for less and put up with less than the best treatment. And that is why this swamp of illegal aliens is so dangerous. I don't think it's going to affect the rich very much, except to make them richer. That's why guys like uh, Microsoft or whoever, Facebook, Zuckerberg, they love the masses because amongst the masses they get cheaper labor to run their IT companies. They don't care what it does to the poor because they're not poor. They never see them. They're on their yachts. Spielberg is going to sell his what $170 million yacht I read the other day to buy a $250 million yacht. God bless him. He didn't steal it from me. He earned it. He likes the yacht. God, if he finds that entertaining, good luck to him. The fact is he's not going to feel the effects of this. And so the poor of America are the ones who are going to feel it very, very deeply. They're going to be pushed aside. And having said that, I want to say a few other things about a man of the streets and a man of the people. I'm Michael Savage. I walk in the streets of New York. I can talk to anybody. I can talk to them in, in almost any language. I can communicate with them in almost any language. I have a gift for that. I've told you how I got that. And I learned it when I was very young. And I'm not here to pull your heartstrings. I can stop or a stranger can stop me. I'll give you an example. I was walking the streets this morning around 6.30. I don't know when. And a garbage truck stopped. I mean, these are giant garbage. They're like, these are like the Godzillas of garbage trucks in New York City. They're monstrous. I don't know. You talk about Tony Soprano and the carting business. I don't know where they get these trucks from. They're like on steroids, and there's bags of garbage that these guys are picking up. And a garbage man drops a glove as he gets out of the garbage truck to pick up the thing and make the back go, mm. And I see he drops his glove on the, on the floor. And I don't know what his race was. I, I, I don't know. Somebody, a different race than me. I turned and I said, I signaled, you dropped your glove. And you're saying it's a simple thing like that? The guy looks at me and thanks me like a salute. I dropped my, thank you. Thank you for telling me I dropped my glove. Now, what's the big deal about that? Nothing. It's an insignificant interchange between two strangers. But here I am in a, in, in a metropolis, New York City. Man, a garbage man drops a glove. I could have walked by and said, who gives a damn about his glove on the ground? But he's a working man. I know he needed that glove to make his truck run because I come from working people. So what am I saying? I'm a great guy. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just saying I can communicate with people. So I know what people feel and I know what people think. So here I am. So I get the three papers from the city. Daily News. New York's finest on the job in Times Square. And there's a word I can't use. It's about a woman's breast. It's in, it's in three letters that begins with the letter T. This is the headline of the Daily News. Begins with T and it says T for brains. Cops shocking picks with topless hustlers. So they're making this the issue now, that two cops innocently took a picture with two girls in skimpy outfits. This is what they do to attack the police in New York when we have so many problems. And how much does this cost the Daily News? A buck and a quarter for a skinny little newspaper. Skinny of idea. <laughs> okay, then we got the New York Post. I shouldn't knock them. It's in Murdoch's paper. They love me. You know, I got to be nice to them. They have me on Fox all the time. And here's another skinny paper. It says just a buck. So they're in a price war now. The Daily News, a dollar and a quarter. And this is selling itself for cheap. It's like doing a price war. Both of them have no news. They're skinnier than ever, but they're cutting each other's prices. And what's the headline in the New York Post? The guy with a baseball glove in a hand with a stripe. Yanks win as pitcher drilled. I guess that's what the average man cares about. Page two, bid to flush out FDNY toilet test cheaters. Okay, don't know what it means. Page three, a girl with skinny legs. Model legs at JFK. 
Travel might be exhausting, but Chrissy Teigen didn't show it while strolling through JFK Airport Sunday. The Sports Illustrated swim salt, swimsuit stunner managed to look every blah, blah, blah. So she has skinny legs, which they airbrushed to make it look like a four-year-old, five-year-old with skinny legs. I don't get that story. We still don't have any news now. Let's see. Page four. DOE probers out to lunch. Uh, investigation big rips lacks oversight. Don't know what it's about. We still don't have news. We're on page five. So happy, then he just snapped. I have no idea what the, slay, Shock at slay of Morgan Kin. Morgan Kin. Friends of Morgan Freeman's granddaughter and of the boyfriend accused of killing her said, Mon Okay, I can't get into that. That's a personal tragedy. Still no news. We are on page six of the New York Post. Sorry, state of killer. Suspect apologizes to the 99 victim's kin. Don't know the story. Page seven comes a courtin Trump's jury duty. So they buried Trump on page seven about the jury duty. And then on the bottom of that, of the New York Post, there's a tiny story that says people like Donald the most, according to the latest poll. Buried on page seven of the New York Post, underneath rapes, murders, baseball gloves, Skinny legs. There's Donald Trump, and here's the poll. People like Donald the most, according to the latest poll. The billionaire presidential candidate pulled in 6.8 million unique visitors on Facebook for more than a moment. So he's tearing up the Internet. Everyone loves him. And where does Murdoch bury him or whoever runs the paper? Nowhere. Nowhereville. And that's it, and that's the news. All the news you didn't need on the Savage Nation. But now let's go to the most important record of our time. The New York Times, and this is the joke of jokes. Look at this headline. Religion meets rebellion. How ISIS lured three friends. London girls heeded siren call, tailored to teenage dreams and vulnerabilities. Would you believe they're talking about Muslim girls who tried to join ISIS when they write it in such poetic language? And you wonder why the West is dying. My friends, it's not because of Donald Trump. It's because of Pinchy Sulzberger. Who owns the New York Times? Pardon me, that was the Greek salad. They put a secret uh, gherkin in it. They have like these secret things here in these salads. Well, they put like a secret Greek gherkin that if you're in radio, you should never touch because they come sneaking up on you in the middle of a, a shtick. Um, my producer just said, tell the audience how much that one costs. That newspaper costs $2.50. So let's look at the bargain here. The news, a dollar and a quarter. The Post, just a buck. But if you really want to be smart and get somewhere, you get a New York Times for two fifty, and you learn how to fold it. They have a special section, a diagram on page six, 16 that shows you how to fold it and put it under your arm to look like you're smart when you're riding in the subway. <laughs> it's the Savage Nation. What do you want me to talk about? If you want to stick to Trump, okay. How about something else? Why don't I just take requests now that I'm in New York? Can we do anything else but talk about the election and Donald Trump? Can I talk about the coming civil war, which already came, but it didn't leave yet? Can I talk about the fact that Government Zero, which was number 149,000 last week on Amazon, is now, I swear to God, it was like number four in politics, and the book isn't published for another two months? Because it's the last book you're ever going to have to buy on politics. It's everything you ever knew about the liberal world and then some. 855-400-728 to the fact is, is that immigration is the issue of the century. And I would beg my call screener to perhaps give me something other than Donald Trump to talk about. Otherwise, I'll start singing. Uh, uh, I'll start singing Frank Sinatra tunes. I'll do karaoke here if this keeps up. I think I'll do a family story. Wait a minute. Uh, Ryan, turn on the overhead lights now. I can afford to, to get blind and read, read from here. Boy in the Basement. That's an interesting one. How about I got how I got into radio? This is interesting. It's in my it's a Christmas book that was put out by Harper several years ago. So I'm not selling a book, but it's a charming little book about my childhood stories that many of you love. And I dedicated it like this. It says all memories are traces of tears. Chinese proverb, which I thought was very touching. Because all memories are traces of tears. And it has stories in it like train tracks, boy in the river, the porch, cars, food, nightclub, propellers, slum dialect. Let me read about slum dialect. I forgot that one. I wrote slum dialect? Ooh, that's bad. Let's see what Michael Savage wrote about slum dialect. Chapter 8 of train tracks. How I learned to speak is very interesting. Given that I, I am an immigrant son, my father emigrated from Russia when he was seven years old. 
and he had a slight accent, but not a very pronounced one. Having grown up in the tenements of the Bronx, I had somewhat of a slum dialect until I went to college. I remember entering a speech class 101. I was asked to give a speech. We were told to listen to recordings of Winston Churchill and Franklin Delano Roosevelt as examples of two of the great speakers of the time. I was ashamed to speak publicly, you see. I had a private conference with my speech teacher to tell him I was embarrassed to speak. But he was a very nice man. He said to me, look, Michael, you have a wonderful speaking voice. I said, but I say dem and dos and those and this and that. He said, Michael, don't worry about that. Just speak and eventually that will be forgotten. And that's how I learned to dare speak in front of groups, where I got the confidence to speak publicly. That is how I learned to give speeches through the confidence given to me by this wonderful speech teacher at Queens College. I always had a good speaking voice going back to the first grade where I was made the announcer. But why was I made the announcer? Because I was the only kid in my class with a blue suit. God bless my mother. She bought me a blue suit, white shirt, and tie. So the teacher said, look, because you have a suit, you're going to be the announcer. I'll never for forget getting up in front of that audience. I love the feeling of looking at all those kids staring at me. I guess you might say I was born to lead audiences. I'm Michael Savage. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I'm trumped out. It's all anyone's calling about is Trump. I was goofing around with, I have, uh, you know, people in the studio were joking around. We're talking about where we're going to eat dinner tonight. I mean, I'm in New York. What am I going to talk about food, right? So I said I had great Italian last night. I had spaghetti with, with uh, eggplant and no cheese. Everything was amazing. It was near Lincoln Center. I, they took me up there. The food was awesome. It was really good. And what I like is people watching. Who's in the next booth and what are they talking about? I have like dog ears. I can overhear that one. And they're talking about an entertainment and an actor and the, who's in the theater. It was very interesting. Interesting. Tonight, I don't know what I'm going to get. So he just joked with me. He said, what size is your waist? I said, come on, man. That's not your business. He said, I told him I broke a certain number. I said, I'm hitting Chris Christie territory. So he started to crack up. I said, I said, you know you're in trouble. Like when you buy your regular pant size, but it's like an expansion pant. Do you know about those pants they're making now? It's like your size, but it's got elastic, an elastic band where it's called comfort fit. So let's say you're, I'm going to not even tell you. Let's say it's a 38, but an elastic job on it. You could like blow it up to a 42 without even knowing it. They put so much elastic in the pants we're like middle easterners with a robe now who really wants to know what our waist size is does anyone why should we pay attention to our waist size like i'm a 38 i'm a 39 i'm a 40 because a guy breaks 40 like that's like a woman turning 31 is the same thing if your pants go over 40 you're, you're hitting chris christie territory i mean it's unbelievable to me but everyone's focused only on their waist like that's the mark of a man's virility his success rate it's unbelievable what the size of a man's waist. When did that ever be determined? Anything? That's why I don't mind the Iraqis who march around. Each of them eats a quarter of an entire live lamb every night. The wife pulls it out of the pen. They stab it in the neck. They bleed it in the backyard. They cook it. These guys don't eat a little bit of minced lamb. They eat an entire quarter of a lamb. Do you ever see the size of these men? They're, and we're supposed to help them. Remember in, in the in the Iraq War? I was looking up them. They were all better looking, stronger than most Americans. Here were vegan, vegan, hygen, migan. People can't get out of their own way. Still only calls on uh, Trump. I'm trying to blow the callers off. They won't leave me alone now. He's taken over the entire show. Okay, then we're going to do this. You're going to get 15 seconds or less, not to talk about your waist size or what food I should eat tonight, but Donald Trump and why you don't like him. It's that simple. You many are saying you don't. I do. Don't get me wrong. Okay, remember, 15 seconds, and we're going to time it, guys. Line one, BAP Dallas. Trump, go ahead, please. Yeah, uh, Trump, you know, I'm chicken in every pot. I've been hearing it for 60 years. I don't know if I can believe it. I mean, how many times you go back the same trap and get burned? You said it in four seconds. You're good. You said he's a typical politician who is promising a chicken in every pot. Well, that's better than Obama who promised us pot in every chicken and delivered. <laughs> that's a savage original. That's pretty good, isn't it, Ryan? Because Obama has put pot in every chicken. All right. Line number two, John, 15 seconds or less. Go. I gotta wonder, as a real conservative, will he hold up in a final debate, you know, against uh, Hillary or whoever? And second of all, um, is he going to be able to overcome the idiot voters? You know, the cheating they're obviously going to do on the left. I mean, the IRS situation isn't resolved yet. Uh, I don't know. 
it remains to be seen. But you will admit that he's made it okay to be successful and proud of it again. If you got it, flaunt it. That's what I say. I think I'm going to go out and buy a new pair of pants while I'm in New York. I'm going to go right to a clothing store right after this show and buy a new pair of pants with an elastic band. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Executive order gets uh, rescinded. One good thing you'll about it. Rescind, one good thing you'll about rescind the Dream Act executive you're order. Have to, DACA. We have to make a whole new set of standards. And when people come in, they have so to come in. You're going to split up families. Chuck. You're going to deport children. Chuck. Oh, no, no. shut We're up, Todd. Keep the families together. We have to keep the families together. But you're going to keep but them they together. Have to go. Out. Uh, they go have grow to go. a beard on no your brain. We will work with them. They have to go. Chuck, and we either have a country or we don't have a country. See, there's this lightweight, Chuck Todd. He grew a beard, tried to look like an intellectual. And he's trying to, like, pin the tail on the donkey. That's his job, is to get real tough with Donald Trump and real tough with the nice Republicans and sits there like a lapdog when he's around Obama the dictator. Don't you love it? Chuck Todd, real tough guy, but put him in a room with Obama. He needs a pair of Depends. Trying to pin a tail on a donkey. Oh, we got to break up families. You want to break up families. So you know what we're talking about, Chuck, you idiot, you? We're talking about the stupidest nation on earth with an anchor baby law. You know what the anchor baby law says? If you come here and you're nine and a half months pregnant and you have a baby here, the baby's an automatic citizen. Say, well, that's okay, is it? Let me tell you about a country that stopped their anchor baby law, and I'll tell you how it happened because I know very well how and when. Canada used to have an anchor baby law. Which said, just like this dumb country, if you're pregnant in your ninth month, take a plane from China, take a, a bus from Mexico and get over the border, deliver the baby here, the baby's a citizen, and bingo, they pull the whole family in. Canada was being inundated by mainland Chinese who were flying in in their ninth month, delivering babies literally at the airport, and take a guess who in Canada eliminated the anchor baby law it was a chinese canadian it was a canadian of chinese descent who said we cannot survive as a nation if we permit china to keep doing this to our country and they eliminated the anchor baby law you learned it first right here on the savage nation and it's long overdue that we eliminate the anchor baby law now why is this so difficult for anyone to understand now i know many of you are immigrants descendants as i am my father was an immigrant by the way not my grandfather my father I'm first-generation American. Does that give me a special place? Not really. But I know very well what it is to have one foot in the old world and one foot in the new world. And the fact of the matter is, I have two feet in this world at WABC. And I'm very happy that my father was an immigrant. But the fact of the matter is, is that we cannot take all of the world's poor. As I said to you, Canada eliminated the anchor baby law. Canada did it, and it was a Chinese-Canadian who did it. Because he said otherwise, China's going to dump all of their young on us. We can't afford it. So why is this so difficult for people to understand? What, because someone gets labeled a racist? You've got to get over these labels. And Trump is the only one who is standing up and saying, look, Chuck, Chuck, stop it. We need to have laws or we won't have a nation. And Chuck Todd keeps trying to run him over, run him over, run him over. And, and he does it, by the way. Without anger. I couldn't pull it off. I would have gotten mad at Chuck Todd. I would have yelled. But Trump does it in a Reagan-esque manner. That's the truth. He has good nature. And I think that's why he's selling. He doesn't get mad. They don't have the ability to provoke him. At least that's one man's opinion. You know, we're talking also about the big bomb attack in, uh, in Bangkok, Thailand. It's an ISIS event. Thailand's never had such an explosion in downtown Bangkok. And believe me, as I walked around Times Square last night at midnight and saw a million people sitting there at midnight looking at the signs, I said, what's going to prevent us from having some idiots set off a backpack explosion? The cops are everywhere, by the way. God bless the NYPD. Of course, today, the NYPD under May, the Blasio may as well stand for not your problem, dear. That's something my wife taught me, which is when I stick my nose into affairs that are really not my business, she grabs me by the arm and she says, NYPD, not your problem, dear. You know, I was going to talk about the explosion in Bangkok by ISIS that you didn't read about. Whatever I turn. Last night on the way into the uh, hotel here, 
come into the hotel. Bingo. Biggest explosion in Bangkok's history. 40 people dead, 150 wounded. And the reporters say, we don't know who did it. We have no idea who did it. We don't know why anyone would do it. We don't know how they did it. We don't know why they did it. We don't know where they did it. We don't know where to turn. We don't know who would do a thing like this, why they would do a thing like this. On and on and on. Not one mention of the obvious Al-Qaeda, ISIS, nothing. Nothing. Not one word. And you know, i got to tell you the truth. When you come to a city like New York, you've got to understand, I work in isolation in California. You know that. It's me and a 10-pound dog. I stare at the bay or I stare at the wall. I read the news. I read the headlines. And I think that's the world. That, my friends, is part of the world. You come to a big city and you walk around, whether it's in the summer as it is now or the winter, and you see millions upon millions of people scarfing pizza, eating a hot dog, devouring a newspaper, sweating, whatever they're doing. That's real life 101. They don't know about a bomb in Bangkok. They don't care about a bomb in Bangkok. They don't even know who Obama is. They have no idea who Donald Trump is. They may have heard of him. They think he, he's somebody in a hotel business. They don't know why he's running. They think Obama was president. He might have been in the Abraham Lincoln's time. Take a look at what's going on. Look in the streets. They don't understand anything about politics. That's the real world. I'm telling you, I know what I'm saying. It's the girl in the sweaty dress. It's the guy in the hot shoes. It's the souvlaki guy towing the stand at midnight. It's the guy running the garbage truck at 2 o'clock in the morning, picking up the trash that stinks. That's the real world. It's astounding. I went out to Times Square last night at midnight. I couldn't sleep in the hotel. And I go walk down to Times Square. A million people are there looking at the electronic signs. And I said, that's real life. Anyway, the news is pretty horrible. Only in San Francisco, stolen car suspect falls off the Bay Bridge evading police. A woman, probably a crack uh, head, wrecked a stolen car on one of the bridges. And as she was being held by a California Highway Patrol officer, the perpetrator fell 70 feet from the bridge to the water and got away. Now, wait a minute. The story gets even better. She falls 70 feet into the water, the crackhead. And apparently she survived. Some motorists reported seeing a woman soaking wet standing on the north side of the bridge near the toll plaza trying to flag down traffic. And wait, it gets even better. A dump truck driver later showed up at the CHP's Oakland office saying he had picked up the woman near the Bay Bridge but was unaware of her exploits until hearing news reports after he dropped her off at an undisclosed location. Wait, it gets even better. So now the CHP is looking for the woman. Are you ready for why? Not to arrest her for stealing a car and crashing it into the bridge. CHP officer Daniel Hill said, we would like to find her, obviously, most notably, because we'd like to make sure that she's okay. So you see, in San Francisco, crime pays. It's the obverse of everything you learned. Fargo and West Fargo. You know where that is, don't you? You ever hear of a place called Fargo? There was once a movie done about Fargo, North Dakota. Well, the Lutheran Social Services racketeers, excuse me, I shouldn't say that. Remember I told you that the Baptist family services are making billions a year in bringing in refugees because they make money on servicing the refugees? Well, not to be outdone is the Lutheran Social Services of North Dakota. So they're bringing in refugees. Are you ready from where into this area where they will never acclimatize? Take a guess where the refugees will come from. Somalia, Iraq, and Congo. They'll fit right in. They'll fit right in on, in Obama's new America. Orlando Airport unveils $250,000 Muslim prayer room. I'm not making it up. Is there a Christian prayer room? I don't know. But there's a Muslim prayer room for those of you who need it at the Orlando airport in order to make certain uh, that the uh, reflection room where Muslims can pray will be available to them. The decision was made after Emirates Airlines announced it will soon be offering direct flights out of Orlando to Dubai. A majority of the airline's travelers are Muslim. I have nothing against prayer, but the question is, why is the airport building them a prayer room? Is there a synagogue? Is there a Buddhist temple? Is there a Christian church? I don't know. I have no idea. An inconvenient truth. Climate change industry now a $1.5 trillion global business. Well, that's an interesting one. You mean it's all about the money? I had no idea. I had no idea. I don't really want to read the terrible stories that got me sick this morning. 
except one. There are Christian refugees in the Middle East who have fled ISIS, the Hitlerites of our time, and Obama will not let the Christians into America. Headline, Yazidi refugees escape ISIS, but find door to U.S. asylum locked by Barack Obama. They're facing the threat of execution in Iraq, and these Kurdish Christian individuals that lived and still, still live throughout Iraq, Syria, Turkey, and even Armenia and Georgia, who have applied for asylum in the U.S., are being rejected by Barack Obama. Muslims only need apply. Is this what old Obama meant by transforming America? Is that what old Obama meant when he said he's going to transform America, amongst many other things? Turn it from a Christian nation to a Muslim nation? Oh, I don't mean overnight. No, I don't mean that. Not at all. But what exactly did old Obama mean when he said he was going to transform America and he slammed the door shut on Christian refugees from the Middle East? Of the tens of thousands of Yazidi Christians uprooted from their homes by the Islamo-fascists, only 10 families have been granted asylum by Barack Obama in the United States. Did you hear this? 10 families... Meanwhile, millions of illegal aliens swarm across the borders. Millions of them swarm across the borders. And Jerry Brown is just happy as can be. Happy as a clam to give them everything that they want. Give them anything they want. Health care for children. A new uh, bill came out. A new law that will erase the word alien from California's labor code. Whatever they want, they get. Meanwhile, citizens have to pay for it. Who is going to pay for this, Mr. Brown? Who will pay for your state-funded health care for illegal alien children, Mr. Brown? Tell me, who is going to take care of the illegal aliens who are coming in who are not so nice, such as those who killed? And whatever happened with the Mexican national who had previously been deported several times uh, from the, not only San Francisco's sanctuary city, but other places, who came back and killed Catherine Steinle. And what federal agent lost her gun? Which was the federal agent who lost her gun? Why does she still have a job? Tell me why a federal agent who loses a forty caliber handgun still has a job the next second. Who was the federal agent? What happened to that case? Why is San Francisco sheriff still in his Mickey Mouse costume pretending to be a sheriff? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. I think uh, what I would do is to have rich people pay more to make sure that hardworking young people can go to college. And what I would do is to say, we're going to go back to the level of deductions that were permitted when Ronald Reagan was president. Uh, and I think this will be an important issue to a lot of students and their families around the country. I think we can build a big movement that demands more help. I started out to go to Cuba, and little did I know Cuba would be coming to me. And of course, what she should do is go all the way and follow the Castro brothers and steal all the money of all the taxpayers. Take the houses, take the cars while you're at it, Hillary. Don't just tax the rich. And of course, not you and your husband. You're not the rich, of course. You're the poor downtrodden. Just tax everyone in the middle class. Destroy the middle class the way your friends in Cuba have done. And then you'll be part of the new world order that the Pope will be happy to bless. Well, here's a little story for those of you who believe that all in the other worlds are better than this world comes to us from Breitbart in England. Halal slaughterhouse where staff were caught abusing animals closes down. Outrageous footage shows the sensitive Muslim slaughterers kicking animals in the face, smashing the animals into solid objects head first, picking animals up and throwing them by their legs, fleeces, throats and ears. Now you see, halal law requires abattoirs to stun animals before slaughter to prevent unnecessary suffering. But some exemptions for Jewish and Muslim throwbacks, they don't have to do that. They're allowed to torture the animals because that's the way it says it's supposed to be done 5,000 years ago. And so over three days in December, activists from Animal Aid, God bless them, used hidden cameras to record footage at the Muslim halal slaughterhouse. And you want to hear what they found? 
a worker hacking and sawing at animals' throats in direct contravention of Islamic practice. A sheep, or many sheep being kicked in the face and head, lifted by their ears, legs, or fleeces, and thrown into solid structures. A worker standing on the neck of a conscious sheep and bouncing up and down. Halal staff erupting into laughter over a sheep bleeding to death, with spectacles drawn around her eyes in green paint as she died and bled out. Employees of the Halal slaughterhouse, taunting and frightening animals by waving knives, smacking them on the head and shouting at them. Now, I know many of you will say they're just animals, have fun, but you see, I'm not that kind of guy. I think the opposite is true, and I think that anyone who does this to an animal should be given an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, and a slap in the head for a slap in the head. And those are the wonderful headlines of this hell that God has created called Earth. Here's a couple of headlines that I think are worthy of discussion. You know about the missing emails. That's a big story, but no one's going to really, no one expects it to uh, result in any problems for Hillary. She's above the law. As you well know, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. They own the courts and the judges. They own the Justice Department. It's all a sham. And the only reason the FBI stepped in, in my humble opinion, is to make her look better, not worse. You see, you don't even understand this. This is a triple game here. They, oh, we're going to get to the bottom of it. They're going to discover that she was actually doing something good for America. That's what's coming. No one said that yet except me. Hillary will be totally blackmailable if elected. A friend of mine sent me an email saying what nobody is talking about, but what everyone needs to worry about is that Hillary will be totally blackmailable if she's elected. A new poll. Uh, here we go again. A new poll. Blah, 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 blah. Take a guess what tops Americans' concerns. Terrorism. Mainly Islamic State. The state of Islam that Obama says doesn't exist and has nothing to do with Islam. The number two issue after terrorism is immigration. Immigration is a big problem to everyone except Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and, of course, the fraudulent Democrat Socialist Islamist Party. I want to read you some of the other stories that I found uh, posted for you. Muslim let daughter drown rather than have strange men touch her. Bring in more of them. You see, we need to have America transformed from an evil Christian culture to something more sensitive like a Muslim culture. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. That we can do to stop the violence against us. Well, if, if that is... a conversation that okay, pushed back. Okay, I understand. And, I understand what you're saying. also respectfully. Yeah. Respectfully. Well, respectfully, if that is your position, then I will talk only to white people about how we are going to deal that's with a very I mean. real that's problem. So that's Hillary Clinton to the Black Lives Matter uh, folks saying, I will only talk to white people about dealing with racism. Does it get any lower than that? Does it get any lower than Hillary Clinton pandering to a group of radicals in Black Lives Matter? Does it get any lower? Does it have to be spelled out for you to understand that she'll be a bigger divider than Barack Obama? Now that circles us right back to Donald Trump. Is he a divider or a uniter? I don't know. There's a lot of folks who are not white who like him. There's a whole huge community of people of other races who look up to him because they want to make it in America. That's the dirty little secret. They want a rich man to teach them how to be rich. They want a rich man to show them the way. They want a rich man to say, it's okay to work hard and make it. Maybe you won't be me, but you'll get somewhere along the way. They don't want to hear from a woman who's going to say, you got too much if you make $45,000 a year, now you're rich. Hillary service kept in bathroom closet. You know, I was just in the restroom. I didn't find them. I, I looked after I was through and washed my hands and washed my face. I looked in the, in the trash can. There were no servers there. I wonder where she put them. Zuckerberg, how many times have I attacked that fool in that undershirt? Why does this billionaire kid of Facebook want illegal immigrants in America? Do you think that he and his wife sit down to dinner with illegal immigrants? Do you think that Facebook invites illegals into their boardroom? You gotta be out of your mind. He wants cheap labor. He doesn't care what it does to the country. So Trump says he wants a crackdown on illegals. He wants a crackdown on illegals. The Mexican government is in, a, in an alarm state. Why? Because they don't want him. That's why they're sending him to us. The all the people in their country they can't take care of. They don't want him. You take him, you idiots. This is the number one issue of our time. 
And I've been on this since 1994 when I began a radio. We're all on it, but I was on it in 94. All my books are about it. Borders, language, culture. Where do you think my motto comes from? Borders, language, culture. What do you, what do you think I mean by that? And that is why Trump is pulling ahead of all competition. He is the only one hammering on the issue of illegal immigration. Now, having said that, let me back up for a minute. They're human beings. They're human beings. Let's not demonize everyone who comes across the border. A lot of them are criminals. We know that. But if you walk around a city like New York, especially at a time like this, and you see the phenomenal, I hate to use the word, I don't want to use the word diversity, the phenomenal mix of human beings, all races, every language you could imagine being spoken in the streets, that's, that's human beings. That's immigration. Now, most of these people here are tourists. That's obvious. But the fact is, the countries they come from are far tougher on immigration than we are. They've closed the doors to illegal immigrants into Mexico. It's a locked Berlin wall between Guatemala and Mexico. They don't welcome Guatemalans. They don't let them over the border. And if you look at any nation on Earth, the fact of the matter is, if you don't have a border, you don't have a nation. It's like a cell wall in a plant. Remember when you were in high school, you studied the thick cell wall that uh, kept the good stuff in and the bad stuff out, right? Well, we don't have a cell wall. We have no nation. And that's why Obama wants us to have no cell wall. He wants this nation to dissolve and become part of the protoplasm of the world, the new world order. Trump says illegal immigrants have got to go. It's like, hey, hey, ho, ho, all the illegals have got to go. He more or less <laughs> has said that. Well, that has got the uh, establishment in an uproar. Trump says illegal immigrants have got to go. Is he reading my books or what? Is, is Donald Trump reading this book? Has he read Stop the Coming Civil War? I don't think so. Does he listen to talk radio? I think so. Do his advisors read the Drudge Report and listen to talk radio? I know so. And so he knows what you feel. He knows what you want. He knows that you who listen to talk radio are actually the ones who drive politics in the country. You may not know it. But the people I mentioned don't drive politics. They're the extras on life stage. Most of the masses are extras on life's stage. They don't know where they are. They wander around. They walk into curtains. That's it. And then there's a small number of players. And I believe that we in talk radio, we are the players, the internet are the players, and of course the listeners and the readers are the players of politics in America. And of course we're talking about the news, which the average person just doesn't care about. You got to look at the average person, the cab driver sweating to make a buck, the garbage man two o'clock in the morning picking up the trash. Do you think that they care about politics? They really don't. And that's why the fact of the matter is that's why politicians get away with what politicians do. Is this a new phenomenon? No. Cato the Elder, the Roman historian, wrote that the average Roman did not care what the legions were doing in a foreign nation. They didn't care about wars overseas. They didn't care about what the politicians were saying. What did the average Roman care about? <clears throat> he wrote, the average Roman cares about the pebble in the shoe. What is the pebble in the shoe? The price of wheat, the price of leather, the uh, taxation. In other words, the stuff that the average person is affected by is all that the average person cares about, which is why we in talk radio are rather weird. We care about all this stuff all the time. Well, the average person cares about it maybe a week before an election, and that's about it. Now, I want to backtrack for a minute. The street rabble are trying to burn the city down like they did in Baltimore. And we disclosed in the Savage Nation from an article in Washington Times that these street rats are not spontaneous. They're funded by George Soros through numerous communist front groups who want to bring America to its knees. And what's disgusting about this is how the media continues to report as if this guy Brown, who was killed, was innocent and just shot by a white officer. You see two juries... And the Federal Justice Department found Officer Wilson innocent, not guilty of any crime. And yet President Obama, Eric Holder, Al Sharpton, and other rabble-rousers falsely built up the hands-up, don't-shoot movement and made it into a national uprising. They have provoked racism. They have provoked division in this nation. I think the protesters should be marking this anniversary by apologizing to the businesses they looted and burned last year and apologizing to all the people that they hurt last year, many of which were owned by black people, by the way. Unbelievable to me. I would believe that Martin Luther King Jr. and other true civil rights leaders would be rolling over in their graves when they see how 
their movements have been hijacked by people like this. The news article says protesters mocked the one year anniversary of the killing of an unarmed black teen by police. Shame. I would say shame on Reuters, but I've come to expect nothing less from the far left in the media. They twist everything to match their own agenda. The fact of the matter is, this is a nightmare. And there was an article about this last year by Aaron Klein, where he proved that the top Occupy organizer was the one who trained the Ferguson protesters. The veteran street agitator, Lisa Fithian, did this. She has been training these people since the 1999 Seattle riots. She specializes in aggressive, quote, direct action tactics. And by the way, the, the phrase direct action comes from the communist movement, if you want to do some research. She has run training sessions for demonstrators, teaching them how to simulate chaos. And the reason she wants chaos, she says, is because crisis, crisis is that edge where change is possible. Bring it all down, girl, eh? Bring it all down, girl, eh? Is that it? And if you think the Ferguson protests, where they're calling for civil war, wanting to kill white cops, is happening spontaneously, you are mistaken, my friend. So here's the question of the day. What is Soros's motivation for stirring up all this unrest, not only in Ferguson, but all over the country, and frankly, all over the world? What does he hope to gain? Well, let's speculate, and it's pure speculation. We don't know what a billionaire, trillionaire like him thinks, so we can only guess. Why would a man who allegedly survived the Holocaust and is welcomed into the United States of America as an immigrant, where he makes his fortune, why would he do this to the country? What would he hope to gain by causing unrest, by funding Ferguson protests, where they're now chanting, we're ready for war, we're ready for war, we're ready for war? What would he gain? Well, unless he's insane, you have to think he's doing this for a reason. And for a man like Soros, it's always money. He's a businessman, pure and simple, and a left-wing social activist. Never forget for one minute that most people who are social activists are in it for the money. Never forget that. So you wonder, I'm going to move on from Ferguson, but before I leave it, i got to play the chief community organizer, the man behind all the riots, because he happens to be in the White House now. He's gone from the streets, from the gutters, right into the Oval Office. So since it's worked for him, why shouldn't it work for these other, other radicals? Listen to clips one and two on the Savage Nation. I think it's fair to say that uh, if, uh, in my first term, uh, Ferguson had flared up, uh, as President of the United States, I would have been commenting on what was happening in Ferguson. Here's one thing I will say, uh, is that I feel a great urgency to get as much done as possible. And there's no doubt that after over six and a half years on this job, um, I probably have uh, an easier time juggling a lot of different issues. And uh, it may be that um, my passions show a little bit more. Um, just because uh, I've been around this track now for a while. What is he talking about? What exactly did he just say? What did the great dissembler just say? Does anyone understand what he just said? He's more excited than ever. He's got a lot to do, and he's in Martha's Vineyard with the billionaires that he bashed out of the other side of his mouth just the other day. He's down with the people of Ferguson, but he's in Martha's Vineyard eating an ice cream cone with all the hedge fund operators and the other people who drive America's economy. It's unbelievable to me how he gets away with it. But then again, that's an old story. We've covered it. There's a lot of other news. I'm glad that you listened and you learned something today which is that despite what the media would have you believe, these are not spontaneous protests. They are being funded. They are being supported by big money. I guess there should be a new name for them. What, big civil rights now? Goes along with big government. Mm, Lenny Bruce called it Religion Incorporated. What should we call it, Civil, civil Unrest Incorporated? Civil Unrest Incorporated. Should we call it Soros Inc.? What a book that would be. Any writers out there? Steal this idea. Soros Inc. What a blockbuster that would be. But don't bother. Don't bother. It's a huge chapter in Government Zero 
coming out in October from Hachette by Michael Savage. Yeah, steal this idea. Go ahead, make my day. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. While the people were at the Buddhist shrine, they killed about 40, 50. Who can remember? And they're only Thai people anyway. And they wounded, I don't know, several hundred. But it didn't make it to your paper. Instead, it's all about bashing Trump day and night. That's all they can do all day long. The Chuck Todds of the world, that's all they can do. And the reason that they hate Donald Trump is manifest and manifold. There's many reasons they hate him. He's successful. You know, they used to say that people uh, are jealous of a man's money, his wife, and his shoes. And those are the three reasons that Donald Trump is resented by Chuck Todd and the other Lilliputians. He has more money, a nicer wife, and shinier shoes than Chuck Todd does. But we're here to talk about all the news of the day. We're also talking about the anchor baby law, which Donald Trump says he would eliminate. And the liberals are going berserk over that one. And then I've asked you, if you oppose Donald Trump, to call the show. I'd like to know why. So let me put it to you this way. Nobody running for office is going to give you 100% of what you want. I don't care who it is. Maybe you'll get 80 on the dollar, 75. But when you consider the other Republicans where you're getting 0 to 30, I'd say a 50 to 80 is higher than a 0 to 30, right? So let, that's number one. But the main reason I like Trump is he is saying the right things. People are going to say, well, you can't get rid of the anchor baby law because Congress would never pass it like this moron Rubio saying, oh, it'll never pass Congress. Did Rubio ever hear of executive orders, the thing that Obama's been using for several years now? So Rubio is a lightweight. Rubio is a boy in a man's world, and it's embarrassment. It's embarrassing for me to watch him. He doesn't belong in this race. He was never qualified at any speed. Uh, but, of course, CNN and the others are touting Rubio because he's anti-Trump, so they love him. The reason I like Trump, and let me get back to it, is because he makes he's making success okay again. I got to repeat it. I got to keep repeating it till you finally hear me. I'm the only one who's actually talking about Trump from a an emotional point of view. Everyone's talking about policies, which is good, but let's talk about what his rhetoric is already doing. It's making it okay to be successful. And you see, America is a state of mind. I've known this since I'm 18 years old. America is a state of mind. If people believe that things are going to be better, that unto itself changes things for the better. And we've had politicians like Obama who's run us down. He's made America a bad place. He's made America evil. He's made America wrong. He's apologized for things that Americans didn't even do. And that's made people ashamed to be Americans. And it destroys the morale of a nation. Do you understand what I'm talking about, morale? You ask anybody, whether it's a sports team or the military, it's all based on the morale of that team. And o Obama is the worst thing I've ever seen for America's morale. He's destroyed it. Obama has destroyed America's confidence. Trump is going to give America conf Americans confidence again. He's going to bring confidence back to America. That alone will make us a better country. Now, the, the minutiae of the, uh, the, the positions and the policies, do we really know what he's going to do? Do we really know if he can do it? I don't know. I really don't know. I know most politicians promise the world and deliver some of it. That I know. I'm a realist. But if a guy can make you feel good about a country and make the country feel good about itself, and he can tell foreigners who don't like us to go you know where, that unto itself is worth a lot to me. And I think it's worth a lot to you. But many of you are not sold, and I'm not here to sell you on it. It's that simple. Savage.